for this. Is it the same? Doesn't really matter. Okay, I like this one better. Hi. I want to do it like. Ah, but my boobies are big. Hello. Your boobies are. Hello, oh, we're lava, and yeah. we're lava talks, and her boobies are a bit. How are they again? Juicy. 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 There's a whole new song Juicy. called Juicy. Have you heard it by Lizzo? No. It is my anthem. It's the anthem of your boobs. Yes. And my thighs. And your thighs. And my imaginary wiggly butt. Very imaginary wiggly butt. Yeah. <laughs> See, I added imaginary so you wouldn't take that, you wouldn't use that against me. So I was yeah. like, I was gonna so preemptively. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever. whatever. My okay. ass is jiggly, okay? Just for posterity's purpose. Listen, hello, this is uh, Olava Talks. I think this is our, welcome to Olava Talks. I think this is our very last Olava Talks that we'll be recording this way. So you saved the best for last. <laughs> she's shy. She's very shy. She's very, very shy. shy. <laughs> we've, just, we've been wondering how shy she would no. Anyway, so uh, as many of the people who I think so far watch, which are about 10 people, uh, <laughs> Good numbers, good numbers, good for all of those. Uh, as they know, I always start by explaining a little bit what Olava Talks is. And what is Olava Talks? What is Olava Talks? Okay, so Olava Talks is this idea that I came up with a while ago, like earlier this, no, earlier last year, because we're in 2019 now. 2018, I came up with this idea of inviting people that I was meeting, whether in activism or in the queer communities that I was sort of like, part of uh, people that were really inspiring me, people that were teaching me things that I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, how is it that I've had this conversation over dinner, for example, or during organization of demos or after a demonstration, that I was sitting there having these mind-blowing conversations and every time coming home and just sort of feeling like, it's such a shame that I don't have a record of it and that there's no way to archive these conversations. And oftentimes I felt like, I would notice that within, like within these conversations, if there was like room for vulnerability, for experimentation, it was also a space wherein we could produce new knowledge and new insights. So then I thought, wouldn't it be cool to record it somehow and to have it like online, so I can I can go back to it, but also I, all of us can go back to it and just sort of experience that. So everybody um, can hear you talk. <laughs> hear us talk. Okay, hear us talk. And I've been doing it for now almost a year. I had hoped that we were gonna do two, two a month, but we've been very poor and <laughs> <laughs> had uh, also like busy lives. And uh, so we haven't been able to do as many as we wanted, but I think on average, I think we're about a, one a month, right? That's how we, we did manage to do one a month, publish one a month, right? Yeah. We'd be very fortunate this year we got, last year we got a small grant by Mama Cash. Shout out to Mama Cash, thank you so much. Which have enabled us to go on for another year. Wow. I want to announce this as well. It's a small grant, it's not much, uh, but we, you know, it covers a little bit of our costs, but we have a lot more costs than that. So we're thinking of doing a Patreon uh, site so that people that watch us can also help us out directly and give us some money so we can keep creating content. More on that uh, soon. Uh, we will put it on our Facebook page. We'll put a link here as well. Um, so go to our Patreon and give us money. Give poor people money, that's a good thing. Charity, right? Well, yeah, charity. <laughs> but you get great content for it back. Shush on the capitalist part of it. Uh, support your fellow queers. Support character, yeah, queers, yes, and their content. Anyway, so um, what I've been doing also, I've been inviting people whom I wanted to have a conversation with, and um, it's just been different kinds of topics. We've had, for example, the last person that came by, uh, we haven't put that online yet, but came by and talked to us about fascism and talked about climate justice and um, indigenous uh, climate justice efforts and so on. It was really cool. And um, we've had people come and talk about masculinity, black masculinity. We've come, many different things. And uh, this is Lulodi. Lulodi. Nice way of saying it. Hailing from the beautiful Utrecht. Originally from Brazil. Originally from Brazil, yes. I was like, should I add that or because sometimes people yes. think some people think that if you say where you where you were born or something that that means that they kind of understand something about you, 
That's not always the case, though. Right? No. No. So I was a little... Okay. Rudolfi from Utrecht by way... No, from Brazil by way <laughs> Uh, Ludo D, I know Lou from um, a mutual friend which will not be named because they're it's right over the there world. and they don't want us to say that they're there but the camera doesn't get there so it's okay, you're still safe and uh, from the gender, uh, uh, gender bending queer party you have been one of the co-organizers of the gender bending queer party yes. and uh, where else do we know each other from? Just the general queering around. Gender clowning. Gender clowning. Around. Yeah, queering around. Yes, yes. It's a small community, though. It's not a lot of queers yeah. out there. I mean, who are gender clowns? No, it is no. A, it's growing. I heard there are gender. It's clowns. international. It's an international. I heard there's a growth of gender clowns in uh, Be Seoul. Be on the lookout. And, uh, Tokyo, I heard, is the new chapter. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so a little it's while a thing. Ago, it's a movement. A little while ago, you told me that we need to sit down and have a talk about queer spirituality. Little did I know that apparently you intended to come and interview me. Okay, that's not how we do things here at Olava Talks. It isn't how do you usually do things at Olava Talks? I basically talk. <laughs> and what does and the other person do? They, if they find, if I stop, if I stop for breathing, they add something. Oh, okay. <laughs> Literally, somebody said me. I think I've also talked about this before. That somebody said me message like, "I love all the talks, but why do you invite people if you're not gonna let them talk?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to do better. So you know. Yeah. So, but I also heard that you start by talking about the theme itself. Yes. So what? It's like okay. So, but kindly try to make me stop. Let's agree on a signal where you go like, woman, you've been talking for so long. <laughs> okay, so our signal will be, woman, you've been talking <laughs> for so long. <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. That one stays. That's the signal. Woman, you've been talking for way too long. Or something so, like that. One of the things, okay, so I'll get cracking. Uh, you said to me, like, let's talk about spirituality, queer spirituality. And, um, and you know that I've been uh, for a while now, I think very much trying to find, I guess, answers and practices, but also community. Um, for me, growing up in a very religious, Catholic religious family, um, I got a kind, of re a kind of spirituality that is very much organized, very authoritative, um, very also like in and out, sort of like you be these people belong, these people are doing the right thing and all the other people are bad and they're gonna go to hell. And yeah, and uh, and for me, you know, like growing up, like I found a lot of a lot of comfort in the thought that, you know, the Mother Mary was there to watch out for me. I was very moved by the kind of sacrifice that Jesus represented, and um, and I was also quite scared of God as the, as the Father, and I think it has a lot to do with the kind of father that I had in my life. But anyways. <laughs> And the Old Testament. And the Old Testament. And I think I, I, I look back and I sort of see how much of I projected onto Mother Mary, the mother I wanted to have, and on, on Jesus, the kind of sort of altruistic person I wanted to be. And <laughs> no divine ego at no, all. No, 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 no. So, and obviously that was, I mean, like. The Catholic Church turned out to be a place that was the Catholic Church I grew up anyways with and what I think is still a very dominant narrative and discourse within the Catholic Church was very dismissive and very rejecting of my queerness. And I think till I was about 20 or so, my struggle with religion and spirituality had a lot to do with the fact that for me, religion and spirituality meant that I was going to go to hell and meant that I was inherently, uh, my queerness was inherently a, 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 a sign of, of corruption, of evil, and, and that made me, my relationship to God was one where I was both afraid to live my life most authentically, you know, I was afraid of that, but I was also afraid of dying. So I couldn't live, but I couldn't die either, you know, and... Uh, and that was, that was really the basis of how spirituality and religion came into my life. And now, the last 
four or five years, religion, for like from my 20s to the 30s, religion was no longer a part of my life at all. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly in the sense of like, it was part of my life as a re- something I rejected. Mm-hmm. I could only find freedom and, and so on as long as I rejected religion and spirituality and so on. So I was very atheist for a very long time, but like fundamentalist atheist. Ew. Yeah, really? like if I would meet someone who's like, I'm not even gonna be like, you're ridiculous. I was very. Those are the worst. Anything else? Uh, yeah. But anyway, so the last three, four years, I, 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 I have been challenged to look into spirituality mostly from uh, a program, an anonymous program uh, of uh, addicts who help other addicts. And um, one of the things that they teach in the program is, uh, it's a 12 step program that's anonymous. Anyways, I think most people can look up which one it is, but that's as much as you're supposed to say about it. But <laughs> uh, they teach you about spirituality, they teach you about finding, being connected spiritually. They describe the disease of addiction as a spiritual disease. And that was sort of where I had to, you know, because the program was working for me, I was sort of challenged to figure out some way or another to relate spiritually. And, um, and it's been quite a journey. It's been quite, uh, you know, it's been, it's been hard, complicated, um, but also a bit rewarding. I don't know. Brazil is pretty Catholic as well, no? Brazil is pretty Catholic. I actually was baptized by, well, when I was a baby. My parents were very, uh, non-practice okay like my dad is like a soft atheist or more like agnostic mm. my mom is well she used to be more catholic now she's getting more into like multi-religiousness okay. a bit of the uh how do you say like the mix of brazilian mm. religions also in the way started getting a bit into my mother's life is that because of your influence or is that something that no. she's been doing independently no, I think it's something that came from, well, her being quite open to other things. A lot of people in Brazil can be quite open to multiple religions because mm. it's everything is so mixed, it's hard mm. to not, you know, get at least slightly influenced by little mm. things here and there. And she started working in the a museum that is connected to black communities, to like the slave communities, mm. to the black communities mm. in Brazil. She's like... Uh, coordinating the team that's kind of trying to make it happen mm. so because of that she really had to um go in and like connect to the black communities that that museum will serve mm. and that they want to serve to those. so then she also gets into black spirituality as well and you know afro-brazilian spirituality mm. and that's something that well for her has been really working out mm. um but both my mom and my dad's families are very Catholic. Mm. My mom's family is a bit more left-wing Catholic. Mm. A lot of the, and I think this is something that in a way always influenced me, this idea of spirituality and religion that is not necessarily conservative. Mm. They're part of the, there's a strong Catholic movement in South America, yeah. which is the Libertation yeah. Theology. Yeah. And my mother's family was always very connected to that, very left-wing. Mm. Of course, they have their own issues, and I think that Catholicism is really boring. I had to go to so many <laughs> <Yeah. apps>. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many angels and saints and like, it's, it's, yeah. quite a, it's quite intricate and quite complex, Catholicism. Yeah, but mass is boring. Yeah. And then, I so I loved asking my grandma actually about like, oh, so what's the whole thing about the, you know, the Holy Week? Mm. Oh, what is Easter? What is this? Mm. And uh, I used to watch these Jesus cartoons when I was a kid, just because they were cartoons. But you weren't going to church. I had to go. I had to go to church a few times in my life okay. because I was with my cousins or with my mom's family. Marriages and all marriages. Oh, those are so funerals. boring. Funerals, not as much. Didn't go to a lot of funerals in my life. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I grew up in a bit of this like. Blessed you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> left wingish Catholicism and I always think that well I was always very spiritual in that <laughs> way. Technical <laughs> God has spoken. <laughs> yeah, I think I think God has been like there's so much blasphemy going on in this. <laughs> blasphemy going on in this. It stuff. killed the cable. <laughs> oh shit. Do we still have light? Uh, you might have to pause a little bit, right? Yeah. We'll pause and we'll be right back and fix the 
Is it still recording? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay. Are we back? Yes. Okay. In your hands. Both. And now we're back after praying to the spirits of technology. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to come back to us yeah. and help us in this journey yeah. of filming us speak. Yes, I like that. I will do this every time now. Oh, it's Every good. Every talks, we'll first pray to the spirits of technology because they should be honored and respected. And yeah. and those fucking things are bitches if you don't. True. True, 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 true. You work with technology, you find You know, I talk to my computer, quick, right? I talk to my I'll be like, yeah, hey, hello, how are you doing? It's good. Yeah, just to be nice to it. They treat you nice, right? Yes! Yeah. I do believe it. Okay, anyway, spoilers. Anyway, <laughs> so going back, we're, we're back. talking about, oh yeah, Mass is boring. It is boring. Do, but are you trying to make God angry again? No, <laughs> just, but Mass is just boring, just okay. like it was for me. Um, <laughs> but I was always very spiritual and like, I always like, uh, how did how did that, and, uh, how did you how did you live that spirituality growing up? How did you what does that what does that mean <clears throat> to be very spiritual? Like how did that? Well, interestingly enough, I always kind of connected that a bit with the idea of magic. Okay. Like Brazil has a bit of a thing where religion in Brazil is a bit magical. Mm. Like you ask saints to do things for you. Mm. There's even a thing like if a saint doesn't do something for you, you like put it upside down or oh you know, yeah that, that's the thing you're like excuse me i asked you okay yeah. so you're not gonna do it i'm gonna put you upside down until okay. you give me the blessing that i need oh wow that's nice so there's a bit of this magical thing and for me it was always a bit like that i would ask for things or mm. later when i grew up a bit i discovered these few like uh, holy symbols from rooms like nordic rooms mm. and i started using them in my own like magics of protection or yeah and always a bit connected with this you know the idea of the zodiacs and astrology I was always very interested in that astrology is nonsense by the way but tarot is great <laughs> yes religions are fine <laughs> oracles <laughs> totes totally totally yes astrology though no. you you skipped voodoo you speak tai chi you skipped all those things I believe in. The I Ching, sorry. I Ching, I believe all those things. Star Wars is ridiculous though. Yeah, thanks Fox Mulder. Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Hello. From the X-Files. Ah, yeah, okay. Who used to believe aliens were everything. Aliens are everywhere. And everything else, he would be like, that's ridiculous, Scully. <laughs> that's not a thing. He's like, do you believe in fucking aliens, you douchebag? <laughs> but other than no. He was a douchebag. douchebag. But anyways, point is, point is. Anyway, so that's how I lived it a lot. Like, bringing all these things together. And I think I always like to pince out the things from different religions, like mm. Buddhism or even some things about Jesus and stuff like that and like put them together. And I also went to a Catholic university because mm. that's one of the best universities in Rio. And I had religion class, mm. two that were really good, which talked about many religions. One that was quite good, basically proved to me that communism and Jesus are very well connected. Write that down. Jesus communism was, Jesus is was a Jesus. Yeah, it's no, true. it's the other way around. Oh. Marx wrote communism based on Jesus. Oh, really? Drop the bomb, yeah. Right, right there. Didn't make this up though, I read it. <laughs> um, anyways, so there, so I got all these things and I think that really, bizarrely enough or not, the spiritual side of me always was very connected to the ideas that I have of, you know, like social justice and social matters mm -hmm. and, you know, all these things that, you know, are actually in these holy books and holy texts, mm -hmm. but people decide to, you know, interpret otherwise. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, being rich is easier to go to hell than to heaven. Yeah. Except if you work very hard and get a lot of money and then you go to heaven because capitalism is divine. Yeah. So, so for me it was a lot about not following these mainstream things but going through my own paths and, you know, figuring out for myself what worked, what didn't, mm. using it a bit in my daily life and Yeah. What I find what I find striking is like my I think I've always um I grew up in very much like being thought that anything that wasn't biblical and like 
coming from the whole dogma of Catholicism that it was uh, a pagan and it was satanic and it was you know so magic for me like growing up really had this notion like I, I, I believe that people did it I grew up knowing of people who did magic but that it was something which you should really not do as you know like just was static yeah that um, that also the idea that you could be protected from the magical interventions and so on by the belief in, in Jesus and in, in the Holy Spirit that, that was something that was really near and dear to me and I remember at some point when I started really I think when I was when I was when I was sexually uh, 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 I was raped as a child and I think that that's where I started feeling like there was that 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 that, that, that evil that devilness that that was rooted in me so like it wasn't something at some point it wasn't something that i had to do to like magic wasn't something i had to do to be satanic but like satan somehow had found rooting in me somehow and i, I would really imagine my queerness and my fears and sort of uh my gender identity as just this stain this black shadowy stain inside of what would be normally pure and also white because i grew up with white jesus uh, and white Mother Mary, Mary and everything, and we the iconography is very, everything's very white and bright. And we actually have black Mary in I'm, Brazil. I'm moving to Brazil. <laughs> but <laughs> not all of them, them yeah, though, but just a yeah. few. Because Mary's like that, like there's a few different yeah. Marys running around. But then growing up and basically being, so that was a thing where I was afraid of magic and it was satanic and, and I felt like parts of me were all satanic and so on. And, when I was younger, and then you go into the Western educational system where, uh, you know, at university and in and, and sciences, everything that, that has anything to do with magic and so on, you're taught that that's just ridiculous and it's unproven and, and that's um, a very, like, barbaric way of looking at the world and so on. And, and I think at some point when I also went into the full force into atheism, and sort of Richard Dawkins type of atheism, um, like the sense of of, of 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 magic was something that I just could not intellectually. Uh, I felt that could not intellectually sort of um, like it was. It, it felt like just superstitious and so on. And I think now, now in my thirties or so, like I'm very 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 much curious about magic because. I really, the way I see it is like, there are so many different ways you, look, you can look at the world, but magic, the belief in magic allows for a particular kind of beauty and a hopefulness and, a, and a, it invites you to really engage into, into the cosmological order in ways that I feel that um, as a writer, as a creative person, um, as, a, as a performer even, really feels very challenging but also very fun and 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 yes there are very scary things about the way magic can be practiced but i also believe that you know if i look at the ways i've looked at the world and the way and i'm very i'm so inspired by magic by this idea of being connected by by changing things by um by uh, uh, uh sort of i don't know it's just it's a much more interesting way of looking at the world yeah I'm bored by the scientific, so like nothing that we don't can't prove is real type of thing. I'm bored by it. And when I'm when I'm reading quantum physics, I'm like, this is fun. This is magic, isn't it? Like, yeah. How is this? I mean, we usually joke that uh, science is is religion for white people, right? <laughs> the shade. <laughs> This is the shade section of the, of the, of the talk. <laughs> what you're talking about. But yeah, like because... Obviously there, the, is, there is very dogmatic adherence to scientific theory. Old and scientific yeah. theory. Yeah. It's not even like the most modern things. Like, I mean, that's what we usually call like second grade biology, for mm -hmm. example. When people talk about trans people, they're like, Oh, but this and this and this. Like, yeah, they thought that in 1800s. And you learn that in the second grade biology in your in your studies and then when you actually study it it's completely different yeah, yeah. the same way that you can read like religion you can read the bible and really see all the social justice that is in the mm. new testament and the weird things in the old testament but that you can see them also as part of a culture well 
just to sum this up a bit. But what I like most about magic is this very, like for me, for me a fundamental sense of being connected to so much more. Like, well, to me, like practicing magic is saying, I am somehow connected to particular energies, to actions, choices, movements through life. Like, I am, I can, not so much in a sense of control, but I am impacted and I can impact the world I live in. Instead of like, everything is just coincidence. I think there's something very interesting there. And to go back to the university I went to, one of my favorite of the four, my favorite religion class, really gave me a view on religion that I didn't have at the moment, which is the idea that there are many ways to view the world. Mm. Like there is, for example, a scientific way to view the world is a very specific way. Mm. You can see a fact and explain it a fact, like something that happens in the world, you can explain scientifically. Mm -hmm. You can also explain it religiously. You can also explain it magically. You can also explain it, I don't know. Philosophically. Philosophically, like, narratively. Yeah, yeah. So later in life, it, and especially with the help of non-sons, <laughs> for who shall not be named? Who shall not be named? Because for non <laughs> yes, trying to um, this. <laughs> um, these are a lot of. We can see them as narratives that are created. Don't do that. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> can we blurb this out? <laughs> anyway, these are narratives, right? That we that we can create mm. for us to gain knowledge of the world. And mm. I really believe that you know, as science is one that's very mainstream now and wasn't always mainstream. Mm. Like religion is the same thing and magical practices have the same way. So they create these narratives that mm -hmm. give us meaning, but also that teach us about the world that we live in and that we share. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, that's which really means important also important to me. Which means also that we, no one, I mean, we don't have to stick to one particular perspective. Exactly. Or one method of analysis. Like I can, you know, like I, I really love science to be very honest. Like any, like science every is time, awesome. yeah, it's really cool and really fun. And, uh, and especially for me, like um, uh, astronomy and quantum physics and stuff like I fascinate, I love it. I read about it and I'm like, oh, I don't understand half what's going on here, but this is really awesome. And like, I'm even interested in how do they even come up with these theories? Like how, love it, love it, love it. But I think like, I wanna have the, I don't wanna think in terms of hierarchies of what is mm -hmm. better or what is, I don't know, like what is, I don't think that's necessary. Like I can hold a different perspective and different ways of looking at the world and, and, and cherish and nurture each one of those ways without necessarily juxtaposing or like without necessarily making hierarchies and saying, well, you know, the scientific method is the very best or something, or it's, it's much better than the literary method, for example, or, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I'm not interested in those kind of hierarchies of epistemology. Like there are different ways of knowing and understanding and that's fine, and we can do multiple ones, like our brain capacity can. Yeah, and I think for us, especially for us as queers, religion, if you see it from the more like classical view, like these rituals, these dogmas that are made by people in power a long time ago, those are very oppressive, right? Like for people who are queer, you know, even in left wing, uh, left -wing Catholicism, being trans is not the most easily accepted thing. So, I can also understand how a lot of us well, yeah, have a very always, hard yeah. time. Not always, of course. Hasn't always been that way, obviously. No. But I understand how people, for people like us, it's really hard to, you know, face our oppression by family or mm. community groups and at the same time be like, but I still believe in, you know, I still believe in God. I still believe in what this religion can bring me. Well, I didn't think that I could. I think nobody, nobody thinks that and I feel very blessed that I was always able to because I invent my own religion mm -hmm. and my parents didn't really have one to like pass down to me. Tell me about that inventing your own religion. Well, you just... What do you mean by that? Well, it's basically what I said, like I get things from all these religions that mm -hmm. I like, I put them together and I believe in whatever feels fun or feels true or feels nice mm -hmm. and the moment I don't believe in it anymore or I think you know, it can be improved, I just change things here and there. Yeah. And because I believe that, you know, in the end, the religious view is a view, the same as scientific view is a view, mm. I think, and I believe that God is a bit of the, you know, 
it's a bit of everything, can be everything. There, mm. There's infinite possibilities of a being who's infinite. Yeah. So I believe that I can change it. It doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean... He doesn't mind. <laughs> or she is. This is fine. Yeah. yeah right. Well, I mean, what I think is interesting is about what you said about not being able to... Because for me, like, for a very long time, I didn't think I could believe. And we believe, I mean, very specifically the way I was taught to believe. Yeah. And, you know, sort of like... I Also, the first person I told about being queer was my priest. You know, that's where I went to go get some answers. And I really didn't think I could believe in God, in the Catholic God, and, and be uh, queer. I really didn't think that those two things were possible. It was like, I was so taught, you know, obviously, like, the, it's dogmatic, right? Catholicism is, in, is very dogmatic. Yeah. And, uh, and I think they pride themselves on that as well. <laughs> Even they call them very dogmas. confusing. Yes. Like the three that are one but are three at the same time. Have you ever gotten that? The three one three thing, no, no. and that something, no. and then like the Holy Spirit is dispersed. Like, no, <laughs> I don't. I don't Father, really like the it. Son, and the Bird. Yeah, I, the, my favorite thing about one. Catholicism, to be very honest, was Mother Mary. To I, that was my whole sort of, and I think for a lot of people actually yeah. that I know, the my main the main the cult of Mary was actually the most interesting thing about, uh, which also also has a lot of problems in terms of how we see womanhood. And, uh, but anyways, point is, I have a hard time, and I've been meeting people in the last couple of years, I think from my 30s on, I started meeting people uh, who, are in, who are within the Catholic Church, but who are doing so much work to try to sort of explain and interpret queer friendliness within the Bible which is a way of modeling and shaping uh, uh, the, the religion to, to make space for yourself. Right? Yeah. And, and I've, been, I, I've been calling it that they queer Catholicism, they queer it, they literally sit there and try to find ways to, you know, in the texts and in the practices and so on, and explain that yes, you know, Jesus loves trans people because Jesus said never anything about trans people, never, in the whole, like in all the events, uh, Evangel ugh, yeah. Testament, the New Testament. No one says, and then Jesus said, trans people. No. So Jesus has no problem with trans people. Right? Jesus seems to have no problem with anyone. Not really. Like, you know, specifically, even like, is very chill with sex workers, for example. People who are. Yeah, the marginalized in general. Yeah, Jesus, like, yeah. The poor to people. The poor, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. The, the humiliated would be exalted, and yeah. uh, we know who's been humiliated. But, so, but I, I really like time. that practice of queering existing. I think also I've read and heard about people, also feminist uh, 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 Muslim women and, and, and queer people who are really looking and finding ways to shape space within these, um, within these very established institutions of religion and, 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 and spirituality. Yeah. But I'm also very interested in uh, literally, like what you're describing, this from the ground up and just creating something of your own. Yeah, I right? mean, I don't But do can you call it religion then, if it's not... If it's, I mean, how many adherents do you have? I mean, is a religion yeah. need at least two or three or four? Do, are you looking for disciples? Not really. <laughs> I wish to be fair. Not do you really. Need a cult leader. No. <laughs> I mean, it is like it is what can be considered like really agnostic. But uh, I also like to do a similar example to what you said about not believing that you could be queer and Catholic. I didn't think I could be trans and lesbian mm. until like two years ago, mm. which now seems like the most obvious thing on earth. Mm. Wait, what? Why not? Yeah. But, you know, with all these things that we're taught and these dogmas, yeah. sometimes we just cut ourselves through things that, you know, later it's going to be, like, really obvious. Mm. And I think... But you don't, you don't need, you don't look for... I mean, because religion has a way of providing a very literal sense shelter. Yeah. And, and, and numbers and community mm. and, and, find, and, and offering, like, you know, like... We have these places, these sacred spaces where you can come to and people will be there and they're like-minded and they're following a particular code that, you know, is, is accepted by, you know what I mean? And yeah. But when you create your own religion, what do you kids, have right? comfort? Do you okay. find community? Do you find... 
Yes. Shelter. Yes. And this is, of course, like my own special case. And as you say, it's more of a belief than of a religion, because religion does usually imply community. Mm -hmm. But I think this changed a lot for me. I had a really hard job in Brazil for a while that was felt really stressful and it made me feel very insecure all the time and very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I did a lot during that time was always pray. Mm -hmm. And I prayed in my own special way. I used my own special symbols. But at that time, I got especially attracted to churches, especially the Catholic churches, because they use, they're usually more chill. Mm. Like the Protestant churches, they're a bit more, I don't know, there's something about them that's a bit more aggressive. <laughs> the shade! The shade no, no, keeps no. on going today. Like the Catholic Mass is boring, Protestant church is aggressive. <laughs> no, of course, I, if I, there are some churches that I went to that mm. weren't. Like, mm. I think it's something more with like the newer New Pentecostal churches that really have this Yeah, the very evangelical, the saved and... Yeah. yeah. And the Catholic churches, usually you have this like place where you can pray and put on a candle and you're on your own. And those places really felt for me, you know, at that time, I could like get myself out of the Catholic dogma and mm. Catholic code. And I could just put my own belief there and I could sh share that space of prayer mm. with others who are also using that space for prayer. Mm. And if God is an infinite thing, well, we're all just praying to this infinite thing anyway. Mm. I think it helps I was in the Catholic university where a lot of Jewish people are. And how about, how about, uh, how about leadership but and how about... Going uh, to what I was saying, actually, in... Ah, you didn't expect somebody to tell you to want to talk more than you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we had, we agreed on a, on a... Uh, True. Yeah. But what I was I'm saying is that I think, like, when you ask me about community and religion and spirituality, I think I would especially like queer spirituality more than queer religion. Mm -hmm. Because I think that queering up religions is great. Mm -hmm. But I think there's something very good about you know, us queers and us building our communities together. Mm -hmm. And I think like because we can bring so much diversity into each other's lives and you know rejoice of the community that we that we bring because we are queer that there is space for it in all forms of religion in the queer spiritual group mm. like there's going to be the queer muslims there's going to be the queer catholics there's going to be the queer you know uh santeria practicers mm. the people who really are into yogi and that sort of stuff mm. and you know people who, like me, mix and match everything. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to have this space, you know, that's where we create communities, that's where we create these safer spaces mm -hmm. that we can come and, you know, pray together or we can share but rituals. Because no, we don't do a lot of stuff, but that doesn't mean that we can't. Yeah, because I'm very... Um, one of the things that, again, my... my, my, my perhaps for the listeners, y'all might be going like, oh my God, this woman has such limited uh, ideas about religion but I again I have a very strict Catholic uh, yeah. frame of you know like where I'm coming from and one of the things that I've always been taught um, is that Catholicism also this the supremacy of authority right this dogma the people that study the Bible the people that really perfected interpretations and have really made their you know like priests like are celibate they pray they they commit their entire mm -hmm. lives to this and i find myself wondering whether you know queer spirituality you know like needs some of that kind of committed dedicated um individuals leaders really who really think it through perfect it come up with innovations or you know sort of guide and perhaps also because religion oftentimes is also technologies that we transfer to the next generation, right? We think of things, they seem to work, and then we're like, okay, we're gonna teach our children that this is the way to do things, right? And do we, and you know, like, do we as queer communities, spiritual communities, if, if such thing exists already, do we also need to like have, um, uh, uh, well, I don't know, like, teachers, shamans, or whatever, priests, like, that go and, you know, keep pass it on what we know and what uh, okay so but let me ask you something then like if we get out of this view of religion as this view of just like religion is this thing very specific capitalism etc and just like really break it down into 
group of people, community, dogmas, technology, like you're very strong on the activist scene, right? Mm. You're going to tell me that that's not basically a religion, that you pass down knowledge, you have this community, you get together for these rituals, sometimes <laughs> on special dates, mm -hmm. and you know, you just get together, you do something together. Our you... favorite ritual is going down the street and yelling at Rich and powerful people, yeah, it's a good ritual. <laughs> they call it a demonstration, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not that far away from a real, like, but what is written, the I, I, I of see, war, for example. I, yeah. <laughs> but I see those, I see those, those similarities, obviously, but there, there's definitely, because of those similarities, there are very real risks yeah. of repeating, um, you know, like activists that become sort of like, um, like activist leaders that become the cause. Yeah. That you know, at some point you have you know, and we've had a history where um, uh, where these people also sometimes can do terrible things and very problematic things and very hurtful things, but they have been elevated to a status of like, oh, they're the leader and they know everything, so they're sort of untouchable or something and. Or, or even like just resources that that you see in activist communities being something that people vie for and that people's egos and you know because sometimes there are some real resources huh, that come yeah. in, that come into play and that divide anyway so but that's also a good point like so isn't it interesting to be able to take a step back and acknowledge the form that you're dealing with because mm -hmm. if you don't acknowledge the form. Mm -hmm. Then, then you're stuck repeating the same processes. Yeah. If you make someone divine in a certain community mm. and they become untouchable, because like, oh no, but we're not doing this religious. Or it becomes super powerful, yeah. yeah. Oh no, we're not doing this religious thing. Mm. So you don't have to worry. But then you're like, but it's just so similar. <laughs> but but that's the thing. I often I often see people say like, okay, I think spirituality is this and religion is this. This sort of this is. The categories, religion is this and spirituality is this. But I often don't know exactly where one ends and the other one begins and... I don't know either. I think sure. it starts with form, right? Like religion gives spirituality form. Okay. And I think religion is really connected to community and shared rituals. Mm. The moment you start sharing rituals, you make this community, you get together, you start creating a religion. Mm. Spirituality is something that everybody has or mm. can have or can acknowledge or mm. can delve into or something like that mm. and it's kind of interesting like even like thinking now like you, you literally went on a quest for your own spirituality right you said you're like super atheist and then then you really i know from unknown sources yeah, that who you, shall not be named shall not be named not that name. you actually went on the quest that was literally called olavis questa which was yeah. to try to find Religion or spirituality, that, I don't know the details. Yeah. No, I think for me... How was that for you, by the way? Because I was, was never really, there, It was really fun. It was really, really fun. And, uh, and very interesting. Also very intense, very painful at times. And uh, the, 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 it was like a four, four events that we did and, uh, at uh, Adam Inn. And uh, I invited people, mostly from my community, actually. Most people that showed up were people I knew and talked about um, and tried to sort of together come up with answers and strategies and, and, and ideas around living a spiritual life. And I think what happened during the talks, it became very much, very, very often, very, uh, very quickly became about like, what are you looking for exactly? And, and, and really thinking through what are you looking for? For example, one of the things, one of the events that we had, it came it became kind of my addiction problems and a need for spirituality became synthesized into a discussion on feeling fulfilled, on feeling full, on feeling, on feeling um, not empty, on feeling... And, and that became a discussion about being perhaps accepting of one's incapacity or inability to be full and to be generous and kind and loving towards the, the non-fulfilled self or so. Those kind of things came forward and that was very helpful. I think I got to understand a lot more being what my physical, my spiritual muscle, you know, like if it's a muscle say, like what it entails, what it needs, what its, what's, what it's anat anatomy is. And I think at that time it became very obvious for me that 
my need, my spiritual muscle was parts uh, wanting to feel connected to something, uh, to the world, about wanting to have purpose, and about now, you know, and with wanting to feel connected, mostly as in like now wanting to be lonely, um, wanting to feel fulfilled, and um, and I guess also I think if I remember correctly, also about like love and about feeling loved or being loving towards myself and others and so on, and that's what what came forward from that quest, for me anyways, I don't know if for the other, but one of the things that I then afterwards was really sort of thinking about was how much did I give back to the people who were involved in this quest and how much of what the engagement, that process involved sort of community creation or, because it felt at the end, at the end I felt a bit, months later I was a little bit worried that I didn't give anything back, that I was so geared towards me, very individual, like this is my needs, this is what I'm struggling with, can we all think about this together? And I worry about that, about a spirituality, because I hear and see a lot of the kind of Instagram spirituality that's very much about myself and me and, and me and I and the self and the me, you know? And I, I look at that and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's, in, if that's inspiring. <laughs> I think I have... Um, do we need to click? Oh, you did. Uh, anyway. Oh, the, so the, the tech crew is good. You don't <laughs> see that. It's not. Nice. So what I was going to say is like, I think that's an interesting point that you bring up. like this, Because I do think there is this like cult of the self, mm. right? The spirituality of the self, this cult of the self. It's very neoliberal. Mm -hmm. I think you, you explained your liberalism in one of your Olave explains. explains. <laughs> Watch out for the Olave explains. Anyways. Um, You're going to be a recurring guest on this. You're very great at the marketing aspect of those. <laughs> Anyways. Um, no, but I think there's something very important that she said about like about the, communi the community aspect. Mm -hmm. I think that's what makes it very different from these like Instagram me spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, it's, I read in, I think it's a book called Stranger in a Strange Land, there's this question about why is there a, why is there a donation box mm. in their church, even though their church is like truly there. And they say, well, it's here for people to be able to give and mm. for, for people who need to be able to take, mm. but mostly for the people who want to give. And giving mm. is something that is also very important in religion. That's why you have, not, that's why you have, but that's like an important part, of, for mm. example, of the, of the tenth, that you yeah. are able to give to the church, mm. you, even though a lot of churches don't need it that much, <laughs> and some really abuse that, but... The shade! <laughs> well, it's true, it's not <laughs> even shade anymore, it's a fact. It's a fact, yes, 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 yes. I, I mean, mean alright? Anyway, but at the same time, I understand the people who sometimes are very poor, very proud to be able to give. Mm. And I think that's something that can't be... Is that, is this... It can't be neglected, this, this desire to share. At the same time, the necessity of the humility to accept. Is this why you, is this why you, like, have, like... So now and then, Lou will drag me and the person who shall not be named who's sitting in the back over there, or shall not be named, will drag us all the way to the beach in the cold and the rain to do elaborate rituals. Is that is that is that that need to give? Is that your is that where a bit. Um, so if you're gonna talk if you're gonna get into that it's good to give a little We are getting into it. Getting into it. Like, you escape the love of quest apart. So let's <laughs> So let's just get, so to get into this, to give it a bit of context, last time I went to Brazil, it was a very important trip for me. It was a bit of a, a trip to say goodbye to the self because I've been transitioning for two years and three years now. And it was, yeah, so at the end of 2017, I went back You've to Brazil. You've been doing really amazing, by the way. I've been able to sort of take a look at it from far away the kind of uh, uh, how you've been transitioning and 
and it's been, I've been you do it with so much vulnerability and so much um, and so much they're directing me eh? in the back okay <laughs> with so much vulnerability and 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 clarity as well and so much daring and uh, and uh, at the same time like the way you, you know people like that i know that see you at the clinics for example and so on like they take so much inspiration from you from different people that you don't know that I've, that I've randomly like met and they go like, oh, and Lou then said this to me at the clinic and da 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 and, and um, I'm, very, uh, I'm very proud of you. I remember the first time I met you, I remember very clearly, it was like you were on a date with the person that we shall not be named at a party, at a house party. I remember that. And, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the, the kind of growth you've gone through Wow. Yeah. Fucking and beautiful. I think it's interesting that you say that. And I really can connect that to this experience that I had in Brazil. So when I was there to say like this goodbye to this person that I that I was becoming, I went to a few people. Um, one of them was a what I call my guru therapist shrink mm. because she kind of the way she came into my life and how she helped me mm. go forward and build my own narratives is guru, a shrink, and a therapist at the same time. And using astrology, the thing that you think is bullshit, because it's an oracle for fuck's sake. Built as an oracle is an oracle. Anyway, in my map, she interpreted it because it's I also my, just I a so tool. hard that they're almost rolling out of my head. But go on. <laughs> yes. It's so the way I see it is that the map is a tool, right? Mm. And the way that she uses it, and she's really good at using it as a guru slash therapist slash shrink, mm. also in a way helped me with this narrative of transition. She saw it's like, oh, yeah, I can. I explained what I was going through. So yeah, I can see that right over here. You have this issue with this you know, these two things here that are like going against each other. So this is something that you have to, you know, deal with in your life. And mm. it's something that, you know, if you can deal with, it's going to, mm. you know, it's going to help you grow, but it's an issue in your life. Mm. And being able to acknowledge that is something like, oh, that gave me a narrative force. That gave me, you know, in a way, communion with, the divine with mm. whatever is the universe it, mm. and i'm i'm someone Here, who can be i'm someone who can be very controlling mm. not a surprise for anybody mm -hmm. i think no one in this room is very surprised by that <laughs> but <laughs> no one goes like no you're not <laughs> no, that's not gonna she happen is. She's, 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 but, <laughs> but anyways so one of the things that I have to, that I had to learn in my life was a bit to let go and try to stop controlling everything because almost nothing is controllable in your life. Mm. So it's a lot about going with the flow and figuring things out as you go. And this really helps me. Like if I if I can see something that says, "Oh yeah, I can see your struggle here." It lets me in a way see it. And when I see it and understand it, I can try to internalize it and that gives mm. me peace. And some healing. I really like what you're saying there because I think, um, yes, we have to wrap up. Okay. I really like what you're saying there because I think one of the one of the functions of spirituality, I guess, or, or even of a lot of spiritual practices and, and, and magical practices and religious practices have a lot to do with healing. And, and I think part of some of the promises that we're given is that uh, if you do this and if you do that and if you believe hard enough if you pray this much if you you know use this ointment or whatever then um, like not only will you be healed sometimes also a kind of like promises you things will be prevented from happening like you will be safe like if you believe in God and you do this and this and that you follow all the commandments bad things won't happen to you you will not get sick your family will not get sick you know and, and if they do then it's punishment obviously yeah or you didn't believe hard enough. And, uh, and I think for me, that was one of the very difficult things to reconcile with Catholicism and the religious practice I grew up with, because it just kept on making me think that because I wasn't being cured from being queer, that I wasn't worthy or I wasn't believing enough or 
that uh, that God was punishing me for other things or whatever, and and I think it's really nice what you're saying about healing as not necessarily as like things are going away or you're protected from it, but as a as a sort of like you can live with it. This is yeah. gonna be part of your life, and 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 sort of. Yeah, I don't know, like, instead of, like, trying to make it go away or prevent it from happening, but giving you the tools to live with it. Yeah, like... That's really interesting. For me, a lot of it is, in a way, identifying the issues. And it's not like, oh, you're going to be able to avoid It's like, no, you're going to be deep into that shit. Mm. So you better learn how to deal with it while you're in it, because that's not going to go away. No. I think that'd be good. I think that'd be good for the listeners to like remember this. Queering sp- queered spirituality isn't <laughs> isn't promising you to like you know give you a perfect life, but um, is 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 uh, is offering you perhaps a much more uh, connected life to what will happen, yeah. which is shitty things sometimes. But also the support and the comfort that comes with one knowing. Mm-hmm. But also sometimes providing tools to let you deal with it separately. Mm-hmm. The, the ritual that I drag you and that who shall not be named mm-hmm. is for me, it's not so much as a giving, but that I think as well, but also as a ritual of giving thanks. Mm-hmm. And giving thanks is something very hard to do when your life is shit, mm-hmm. when you're homeless, when your parents kick you out of the home, when mm-hmm. everybody misgenders you, mm-hmm. when you know, when life can feel so shitty sometimes, but giving thanks is also a connection to the divine. It's also a connection of, you know, changing the narrative. And it's it can become a very empowering narrative mm-hmm. if you also are able to thank for the things that did go right, or for the things that you did learn, or for the strength that you had mm-hmm. from going through so much shit, mm-hmm. which is also something. Like, I've been homeless, and... That was really shit, but yeah. that I, I went through it, I survived, I grew stronger. Yeah. And I have to give thanks for, you know, never having slept on the street, even though I didn't have a home of my own. Mm. And things like that. Yeah. And when you acknowledge those things, the other things, well, they're still there, but it gives no, you power. And I totally, I totally, I, like in the program, one of the things that they, I think that they teach you to do, uh, is how to indeed create new narratives and um, like human beings like the stories that we that we have about ourselves and the things happening around us can make us very very sick as well can make us very um, it can and not there are other things that make us sick whatever, mm-hmm. and being sick is not necessarily the worst or anything but I think there's such power in the stories that we tell about ourselves and the world around us and how things come about there's such incredible power to it and um, what they taught me is to create new no stories, new narratives. And I think what I like about, I'm glad that we had this conversation as well, is because I think that spirituality can be about, you know, um, very, in a very engaged, very committed, very active, very intentional way, developing new stories of understanding where we are at, why are things happening to us, who are we, what are we to each other, and so on. And yeah. Yeah. Yes, queer spirituality all the way. Do it at home, kids. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. And, you know, if you fuck it up a little bit, you know, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We have to wrap up. I know we could have gone on for another two hours. Probably, yeah. Probably, yes. Yeah. I have so many good things to talk about. So many good things to talk about. But, you know, I, uh, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to... Um, I think we're, we might invite you again for this again, because it's always yeah. There's always much more to say about spirituality. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Thank you for having. Did you me. have an okay time? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Did you feel that you got to talk? I did actually. You did. Okay. I got to See. Talk a lot. I am getting better. Okay. <laughs> yeah. People writing like sending me DMs and telling me I talk too much. I did <laughs> talk too much. So. Oh I also did force my way into the space uh, and into this talking. No, you didn't force you yourself. Know. No, 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 no. Please do not say you didn't force yourself. Not at all. That's very. 
patriarchal, patriarchal forces. You hey, know, it was forces. consensually you, forced. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, you worked for it. You worked for it. I'm a working girl. <laughs> okay, wrap up. This is getting just nonsensical at this point. We didn't say your name. <laughs>